There's this new school line of thinking. Well, actually it came about in the 1990s, where they said that if you trained for less than an hour, you would avoid overstressing your body, causing a cortisol spike, putting you in a catabolic state, eating away at your gains. Now, I'm a fan of intensity training, whether it be HIIT training or some form of anaerobic weight training. And these training systems create a lot of stress on your body. But I virtually never train for over an hour, so I wouldn't be at any risk of having one of these cortisol spikes, right? Wrong. Truth is, cortisol is released by the adrenal glands during periods of stress. So having a cortisol spike is more related to training intensity than training duration. So along with spikes in growth hormone, IGF-1 and testosterone, we have cortisol coming along for the ride. So what I wanna make clear here is that there's a difference between an acute spike in cortisol and having chronically high cortisol levels. And what we're talking about today is that cortisol spike that comes along with intense exercise. So how many times have we heard that we have to break down our muscles in order for them to rebuild bigger and stronger than before? Well, cortisol is part of that muscle breakdown rebuild process, sometimes called tissue remodeling. But what we wanna make sure happens is that we're always in a state of positive muscle growth with more new muscle being added than muscle being broken down. I'm gonna put links to one article and one study in the description. And what I found interesting about the study, actually I found two things super interesting about this study. Now it was a study of untrained men and women, and over time, it was an eight week study, over time what they found is that even though these people had spikes in their cortisol during training, when they tested their cortisol at rest, their cortisol levels were lowering. So they were experiencing overall lower cortisol levels. And the second thing that was worth noticing is that by week six, pre-workout, their testosterone levels were elevated, indicating that they now had improved testosterone. The article references a study on intra-workout nutrition. Now, if you're eating both pre and post-workout, there's certainly no reason for you to be taking calories in during your training session as the food that you eat pre-workout will fuel your training session. But it does help to drive home the point, the type of calories we should be taking in pre-workout in order to minimize the damage done by these cortisol spikes and maximize the muscle building gains for our training session. Now it was a 12 week study and what they did is they broke the subjects into four groups. The first group was the placebo group and they were given water to drink. The second group was given carbohydrates, and the third group was given essential amino acids, which when we're talking whole foods, we're talking protein. And the fourth group was given a combination of carbohydrates and essential amino acids. Over the 12 weeks of the study, all four groups gained new muscle mass, with the group having the water intra-workout gaining the least, and the group having the combination of carbohydrates and proteins gaining the most. Now when it came to cortisol, the highest cortisol spikes were again with the placebo group and the lowest actually was with the two groups that had the carbohydrates. And the theory behind this is that cortisol converts non-carbohydrate sources into glucose for energy, like our muscle mass. But it's a lot easier for our body to convert carbohydrate sources into glucose. So if that is present in our system, our body will use that before using our muscle mass. So as long as we are keeping our nutrition appropriate in and around our workouts, cortisol spikes are nothing to concern ourselves with. So we can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50 signing out. Talk to you again in that next video.